It is World Family Doctor Day today and family physicians are now more important than ever in Singapore's healthcare system. Over the last few years, the National University Health System has been equipping family doctors with skills and expertise in geriatric medicine and psychiatry. Well, let's get more from Dr. Benjamin Chia. He is the lead of the Health and Mind program at National University Polyclinics. And also Dr. Lydia Ao, head of geriatric medicine and senior consultant at Ng Teng Fong General Hospital. Uh, welcome to both of you. First, perhaps to Dr. Ao. Um, as the population ages, uh, how can the community and primary care providers play a bigger role in frailty prevention as well as detecting geriatric issues? Um, well, I think that uh, to begin with, public uh, information should go out. I think that Singapore and our government is working really hard to um, make sure that our population knows what is going on, what is frailty. And actually, um, the basis of actually coming into the community, into the polyclinic, is to actually extend that base for our family physicians to have much more uh, experience, actually, looking after the older person. Uh, also, the doctors are one part of the puzzle, aren't they? We also have to look at what older people themselves can do to help prevent that frailty. Oh, yes, totally. So I think that, uh, you know, in the near future, we will be working towards more information to tell our older patients or older folks, healthy ones, that exercise, proper eating, good diet. And we actually do encourage a good protein diet. And these are actually some of the cornerstones of making sure the patient uh, remains robust or our, our, our elder uh, persons who actually are exercising to continue and to keep healthy. So that is part and parcel of being uh, uh, better and not to get into a pre frail state. So bearing all that in mind, what to you makes an age-friendly healthcare system that benefits the patients? What does it look like? I think that, uh, you know, if you look at the overall, um, I, I would say that we, would, I tr we are trying to move, number one, uh, our population into a healthier state by giving them enough information to keep themselves healthy. And when you're saying that there's an age uh, healthy system or age uh, healthy system, we are looking at actually picking up syndromes, picking up things earlier in the community rather than let it uh, fester at home and nobody knows what is going on. And then they come into the hospital and they're actually pretty sick or, you know, uh, things are undiagnosed. So this is what I mean by being age friendly. Uh, you know, the system works together to pick it up much earlier. We can have better uh, uh, means to actually tackle some of the problems that our older persons face. All right. Uh, maybe we should bring in Dr. Chia. Can I ask uh, from you, how can shifting away the focus from an institution-based mental health care towards one that's population-based help catch those who fall through the cracks? Hi. Uh, so an institution-based focus on the needs of the patient who come in through the doors, for example, like the hospitals will just focus on the wards and their clinics, and polyclinics and GPs will just focus on primary care. So NUHS is an integration of three hospitals, NUH, AH, Ng Teng Fong, and seven polyclinics. We're all located in the West. So we can look at healthcare needs uh, from a population-based approach, which is looking at what do people in the West, who people who stay around us, what do they actually need? So to enable the uh, mental health care, to make it more complete and accessible, uh, we have psychiatrists, polyclinic doctors, social workers, uh, psychologists. And we also engage community partners like GPs and family service centers. Um, this uh, enables a two-way referral system for example, patients seen at a family service centre can be referred to a GP or polyclinic for treatment. And if the treatment is not successful, uh, we can send the patient to the hospital. And once the patient gets better and more stabilised, the patient can be sent back to the community like the service centre, polyclinic or GPs for further management.
Dr. Cha, we're still some way from that because only 20% of people currently seek help from their GPs and their doctors at polyclinics for mental health. Uh, why do you think it is that people hesitate to get that kind of care from their primary care doctors, even though they must know them quite well? Oh, I graduated from uh, medical school at NUS in 1996, so that's about 26 years ago. Uh, then the focus of medical education was on medical and surgical conditions. When I was a young doctor, whenever I met a patient with mental health needs, I would just refer them to my psychiatrist colleagues. So that has created a culture in healthcare and among the older patients, but that culture is changing. Uh, in the last decade, uh, primary care, family medicine, and our medical schools have been placing increasing uh, emphasis on mental health care. And if you look at the media, there's also greater discussion about mental health in, uh, among the public. So 20% is a, nine, it's a 2016 survey. The next uh, survey definitely will show a different percentage. Uh, primary care and family medicine was, will be seeing more patients. Mm. And let's have you back when those figures uh, climb up to you know, a nice big number. Thank you so much to uh, Dr. Benjamin Chia from the National University Polyclinics as well as Dr. Lydia Ao from Ng Teng Fong General Hospital. Thank you both.